Well, it appears as if we just got a ton of information leaked to us concerning Cold Iron Studios' next project, Aliens Fireteam Elite 2. We have details covering game modes, character classes, weapons, and much, much more. However, I know what you're thinking. Are these leaks real or fake? I mean, after all, this is the internet. How many times have we heard about insider information, rumors, or even leaks only for it to end up being totally false? Plus, with Disney recently suffering from a data breach where the hackers have claimed to have stolen over a terabyte of information, which, as a really quick side note, must take a huge pair to do. Because if you thought face huggers and xenomorphs are the most terrifying thing in the universe, you really haven't heard the horror stories about Disney. Though, now that I think about it, these hackers are apparently a group of furries that go by the name Noel Bulge, so I really don't think they're scared of too much. But I will say this, with so much information being stolen and compromised, now is also the perfect time for just random people to toss out whatever rumor they come up with. So definitely take all of this information with a grain of salt. Though, being a fan of the Alien franchise and actually someone who's enjoyed the original Alien Fireteam Elite, I thought it would be fun to go through some of this information and give my thoughts on what his supposed remake has in store for us. Five. We're on express elevator to hell, going down. But let's kick things off by talking about the game's five playable characters. That's right. This time around, it looks as if we're getting prefixed character archetypes and non-customizable classes. Each one of these characters has a unique weapon and an exclusive set of abilities. Right off the bat, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not liking what I'm hearing. Character customization was such a massive part of the first game. The fact that they're going to be axing this feature in the sequel is a complete massive misstep in my opinion. In fact, it's not just the lack of customizable characters that's a major issue. The game looks as if it's going to completely lock down your playstyle. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. So the five classes are the Swift, an agile giant slayer with throwing axes who can unleash quick ninja melee strikes. Imagine being a colonial marine, basically an ultimate badass, fully equipped with targeting particle beams Felix. Whoa, fried half a city with this puppy. Tactical smart missiles, face plasma pulse rifles, RPGs, sonic electronic ball breakers. State of the badass R. And when you come across a xenomorph, you use a throwing axe? <laughs> You serious? What an absolute stupid idea. Unless Kratos has enlisted in the Colonial Marines, I don't see how a throwing axe is going to do any sort of damage against the Xeno. You might as well use a sharp stick. But let's move on to the next class, the Deadly, an unstoppable berserker battle mech who uses mini guns, body mounted cannons, and hulking armor to smash through enemies. Now this is what I'm talking about. Plus, it would be cool and exciting to see stuff like this, which does exist in the extended lore, brought into a game. I mean, let me have fun blasting waves of aliens with this type of firepower. In fact, this sounds so cool that you may actually be thinking that throwing axes is all the bad news there is and we're on the right track. I mean, who doesn't want to play as a battle mech fighting the xenomorphs? Well, you could think that, but you would be dead wrong. Because next up we have the Silent. The Silent Assassin, who uses a cloaking device and precision sniping to defeat foes from afar. Now, I don't mind a sniper in the game. After all, the first game had a ton of variety with long range weapons and abilities. But cloaking in an aliens game? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe aliens really hunt by mere sight. So what good is cloaking going to do? Imagine turning invisible to try and escape the perfect killing organism as if it would actually save you. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. Plus, what the type of game this is, does it even make sense to have a cloaking ability? This is a level-based horde mode shooter. Hell, most of the time in the first game, I would spend bunker down in a narrow hallway just mowing down hundreds of xenomorphs at once. 
But let's just move on to the next class. The Commander, an expiring leader who enhances the rest of the squad, quickly revives teammates, and places shields. Basically, the unit that acts as more of a support class or character and buffs the rest of the team. And lastly, we have the Ranger, a tech specialist who deploys drones that scans for enemies and who wears an uplink that shares tactical data with squad mates. So basically, a scout, I think the real benefit would be is when you scan and share the tactical data, maybe you offer a boost to like critical strikes for the whole team. That would be kind of interesting. But honestly, guys, this reads as if it's going to be a PvE hero shooter. Instead of just playing as an everyday colonial marine that we could fully customize. I'm really not liking what I'm reading so far. Toying with the different builds and playstyles was just so much fun in the first game. And from the sounds of this, they're axing all of those features completely. In fact, it's not just character builds that this game is falling short on. Remember how I stated how character customability is not the only major issue? Take a look at the weapons. What is this? There's only eight of them. Give me a break. In fact, to make it even worse, most of these weapons are exclusive to a character. For example, if you play as the Berserker, you only have access to the minigun. So realistically, you're only able to select the basic weapon. And there's only three of those. Where's the smart gun? Where's the flamethrower? So far, everything reads as if it's taking a major step back. Why make a sequel in the first place if the original just kicks its ass? Hey, maybe I've been keeping up on current events, but we just got our asses kicked, pal. I don't know, guys. I just hope this thing, if it is real, turns out better in practice than it sounds like on paper. Either way, I do look forward to the official announcement from Cold Iron Studios, which we already know they are working on a game because they've tweeted about it. So hopefully it is an Aliens Fireteam Elite 2. In fact, with the upcoming movie Romulus and the TV show, I truly hope that Disney shines new light on this franchise. Hopefully we even get a sequel to Aliens Dark Descent or pray with me, a sequel to Alien Isolation. But I would love to hear what you all think. What do you think of this leaked information? Do you think it's real or fake? Also, let me know what other alien games you would love to see make a return. By the way, if you made it this far and did enjoy the video, let me know by dropping a like. And if you are new, please consider subscribing. As for me, I got a ton of work to do, so I'm gonna get back to the grind and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.